Lord will die in Cadbury. <laughs> so Newport, the Welsh Derby grudge match, whatever we want to, whatever you want to call it. Um, <laughs> what? <laughs> um, Newport rocked up to the race course with a good following. Uh, that was very quickly silenced, and I don't know. I was expecting a little bit more from them, but whatever. Um, were you? What was your situation? So, where were you? What was your situation on Saturday? I was in the tech end as per usual. Yeah, me too. Lower yeah, tier. Lower tech. Yeah. Um, so uh, let's start with let's start by having a look at, at the at the team and the lineup, and then we'll go from there because obviously. We got one late change, really, didn't we? I don't think it was too much of a surprise, given that Evans had to go out, so James Jones, we kind of we knew was going to come in, or we suspected. Um, but the surprise was that Owen O'Connell went down in the warm-up. Um, Parky said he had a tight calf. There was also other rumours around, I don't know if you've seen this, that he might have had a personal issue, actually, in fact, and that maybe the tight calf was just a convenient sort of uh, front. Uh, so I don't, I don't know. Uh, the raised eyebrows suspect make me think that you hadn't heard that yet. Um, so uh, either way, he, he was he wasn't fit to wasn't fit to play, which meant was it Boyle went onto the bench I think then didn't he instead of instead of Cleworth and Cleworth came into the starting lineup. Um, so that was our lineup. No surprise there, really. Would you say? I don't think Arthur being back was that a surprise? I suppose because we weren't sure. Weren't sure whether he'd risk him or not. Yeah, I think that was the only thing last week which we said we weren't sure on. Um, yeah, I wasn't expecting him to be back. I thought it would be yeah the Swindon match, maybe the Walsall one, but he looked good in his little ninja mask. Yeah, which from what from what it sounds like, he doesn't need it, but Wrexham have paid for it to make sure that he's uh, he's well protected and he has no issue. So um, I'm assuming it's a carbon fibre or some sort of uh, other equivalent. Um, but uh, yeah, that full face mask that he's got on. Uh, so obviously, uh, a couple of things of note. Obviously, Cop End was at eighty percent capacity. Uh, I'm going to call it the Cop End rather than temporary stand because it's. Too many syllables in that, isn't there? Uh, so we'll call it the cop. Uh, that was at eighty uh, percent, and that looked good. Some of the videos and some of the photos that came from there looked really good. And in the end, it was a convincing two nil performance. But we needed Arthur early on. I don't know if you rec- recall. There was a couple of saves, one particularly that he tipped onto the woodwork actually. Um, that we uh, that we needed to uh, sort of uh, you know keep us in the game early on. Yeah, didn't really have a good view from where we were, but after watching the highlights, the one where he pushes up, deflects onto the yeah. crossbar, was a that was a top good save. reflex save, wasn't it? Yeah, really yeah. big save. Um, yeah, wasn't the prettiest match, was it? In nope. terms of entertainment and good football, um, but those are the kinds of games where if you want to go up, you win. You can win ugly, um, and that's a quality that we've shown. And yesterday against Colchester as well, um, we can fight to get the points of our playing good football. So not pretty, but we won. I'm not going to call it a derby because it's not a derby. Um, <laughs> but nice to get two goals in front of that new stand as well. Yeah. Nice and the cake. Yeah, yeah, that was uh, that was quite interesting, wasn't it? I'll tell you what was really interesting, that at half time I'd made comment about James Jones. Because I thought he'd had a bit of a he'd had a bit of a mare, to be honest. He was putting passes astray. I had a look afterwards. His 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 accurate his passing accuracy. Let's see if I can uh, bring it up now. His passing accuracy was forty six percent yes on that day. Um, and if I compare that to Andy Cannon to give you an exact just to give you a benchmark, who's uh, accurate passes eighty percent. So that you know, you're not going to get them all, but you know, he was. There was a couple of times he kicked the ball out of touch, into touch. I don't know if you noticed when he was passing, he looked, he looked like really, really rusty, um, or not prepared. Um, and we had a little bit of that to start with. We just weren't, didn't quite start perhaps as well as Parky would have hoped. Yeah, I agree. Um, I think James McLean as well was another yes. one who yeah. was very rusty. Um, I mean, it's the polite way of putting it in terms of passes and crosses and giving the ball away. Um, so it's hard to pick a man of the match because I don't think anyone really 
stood out. Everyone sort of worked hard, but there wasn't a play you thought, wow, he played yeah. better than everyone else. Arthur and Max, maybe my two contenders um, for man of the match. But yeah, to be fair to Jones, he wasn't the only one who was no. slightly off the pace. But like I say before, it's good that we're winning matches without playing too well. Yeah, it's uh, we're definitely in efficiency mode now, aren't we? we win with, by expanding as little energy and uh, mental energy as possible, because uh, obviously you get the games yeah. come thick and fast this time of year, don't you? So it's just it's win at all costs, isn't it? Um, uh, and none of the football was particularly pretty that day, but again, like you say, you know, we we uh, we get through it. Uh, Elliot Lee was the fop mob man of the match, but that's obviously would largely be driven by his goal as well, if you, uh, you know, I'm sure that would have factored in. Uh, but I agree with you. I don't think, I, th- I was talking about it after, and I don't think there was somebody that I thought was the standout. Um, but um, I, I, the front two really struggled. They were feeding off scraps. They got nothing, didn't make anything stick. Uh, Mull, Mulls always runs around a lot, doesn't he? He always covers so much ground, um, but he just looks out a little bit out of rhythm. I still, I think he just he needs that partner now. He needs a bit of class alongside him to make him get him firing. Um, and ironically, Jones, who I thought had had a stinker of a first half, ends up with a, a really high rating on uh, on Fop Mob. So it's really quite interesting. But Cleworth was the one out of anybody I would potentially say him and, in a, him and Arthur. Because Clever's coming out of the blue, and that's the hardest thing to do. He, he, he'd have known, uh, obviously, he was going to be on the bench, but he would have, you know, I think O'Connell was in the warm up and came out the warm up. So he's got 20 minutes notice, um, <laughs> presumably, unless they did know before they've gone, well, he's got a, he has got a tight half, if that's what it was. There is a chance he might not make it through the warm up, Max, so be ready, but. You know, there is that chance, isn't there? But basically, he's had 20 minutes or half an hour's notice uh, come in, and I thought he was faultless pretty much in that game. Yeah, me too. Um, one thing I didn't mention was the conditions as well, so tough, Windy. tough conditions to, yeah. to come in with all that wind, but it looked like he'd been playing there all season. Yeah, um, and I think a lot of people have forgotten just how good he is because he's not really played this season back end of last season. Um, but I'm still convinced there's a top, top player in there. And I know we're going to Swindon as well, but yeah. he's looked near faultless. Yeah. Near faultless. And I just think that's credit to just how good he is. Um, so he would be my man of the match, just ahead of Arthur for the Newport yeah. game. Okay. Yeah. I, yeah, I, I can I get I get that. And I, as I say, I think that a lot of that has to do with the fact he's coming out of nowhere and put in a performance like he'd been there all season. Um, so, uh, you know, I wouldn't, if, if, if there was a poll and Cleworth won it over Arthur or over Elliot Lee or whatever, I, I wouldn't argue with that. Um, I would, um, you know, it, I, it's nice winning. Um it's it's hard to watch sometimes when you just see, you know when you see some of the football you're like no oh, just it would be nice for it to be prettier but then if you were not county you'd probably be thinking I just just if you, I know they won or yesterday or whatever it was I've lost track of which day it is now um, I'm sure they'd be thinking <laughs> they'd be thinking oh hang on a minute we've lost what four or five in a row whatever it was uh, I'd rather just be winning than playing short corners <laughs> and uh, all the other all the other short passing they do in it so. Uh, yeah, let's not let's not knock winning. I guess winning is easy to watch. Yeah, yeah. Papers the cracks. That's the only concern, isn't it? Though, if you have got issues, you sometimes don't look serious enough at those issues because you're winning games. Um, so as long as we are doing that, then that isn't uh, a problem. Uh, Andy Cannon had a good game again. Nice and tidy in midfield. Looks like a different player since he's come back. Yeah. He was probably third in line for man of the match. Um, yeah, revelation since he came back, what, after his suspension yeah. a couple of months ago. Yeah. Um, probably being our best midfielder, if not player, in those six weeks. Yeah. Um, he obviously had that shaky start to the season where he was dropped and he got sent off. But he looks like the player we signed from Stockport or yeah. Hull. Forget who it is now. Uh, well, technically, uh, Stockport so is kind of right because that's where he was on loan, wasn't it? So that's why you yeah. say that. And I remember yeah. when we signed him, people were saying, if you, you can't win the league with him, then you've got no chance. 
and now I'm seeing the form as to why, because I don't think I really saw that last season. You know what? I always remember the game he played for Stockport against us in the yeah. FA Trophy semi-final two years ago. I know we beat Stockport that day, but I remember looking at him and thinking, how is he playing in the National League? He is yeah. ridiculously good. Um, yeah, complete midfielder, good on the ball, gets around, good tackler, everything you want um, in a title-winning team. Um, so from a Newport point of view then, I think the fans have had a lot of stick because they were, I don't know, they uh, uh, they went a bit quiet, didn't they? Uh, for want of a better word. Um but what did you think of Newport having watched them? Average. Yeah, so they average. are where they are. They're not a million. They're, they're rough. Their league position isn't too harsh on them, is it? They are going to be in that middle section somewhere. Yeah, I think they're what, 16th, 17th. Um, and from what I'm seeing of League Two teams this season, that's where I would place them. Not the worst team I've seen us play. Um, but I, they won't be anywhere near the playoffs come the end no. of the season. They'll be 12th to 17th, for that kind of category. Uh, and we won't talk about referees anymore because I'm just getting fed up of talking about referee. The refereeing standards in League Two are horrific, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. That, that, let's, the, one, uh, the one against Newport was one of the worst I've seen. Yeah, apparently he was he swapped was out. He was swapped out at the last minute. It wasn't who it was meant to be. Uh, I didn't realise that, but he was. Uh, it wasn't the person that we oh, thought at the start of the week. But he was. He was. Oh, he was so bad. He was so bad. Um, <laughs> anything else there then, or are you happy with that Newport? It's. It was pretty rudimentary. Two nil. We just had to survive a bit to start with because they did have a little bit of a go. And at the. Uh, um, and at the end, maybe they just, obviously they started. They played a bit freer when they had nothing to lose at the end, but uh, weren't really troubling us late on, were they? No, like you say, apart from the first twenty minutes, run of the mill standard victory, and disappointing with our fans as well. Okay. <laughs> uh, that's at only one Carter uh, on Twitter. If <laughs> any Newport fans are, uh... although I've said, having said that, there was some. There's been some great vid- have, Their fans haven't taken it well at all, have they? There's some some amazing videos online and some amazing tweets from people who are not happy. They're like bit, they've like they're throwing the dummies out. Like, have you seen that eight minute video that uh, that went? I think there was a two minute clip of it, but it's hilarious. Like. <laughs> Yeah, he was almost trying. <clears throat> pardon me, almost trying to say, "Well, we're not bothered." It means more to wreck some, keep your Hollywood millions. Yeah, very bitter. Very um, bitter. And the pitch invader was another highlight. <laughs> I was, I was still adamant that was Billy Waters. He could tell you what he was quick. That lad was. <laughs> he was quick, <laughs> and he was on and off. And uh, fans helped helped him. I think uh, they threw the security guards off the scent when he jumped in the tech end. So. Uh, uh, in fact, he didn't come far from where you were, Alex. It wasn't you, was it? <laughs> hey, I've got nothing to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you've got a grey coat like that. Um... <laughs> All right, good. That's 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 Newport done then. So um, when we come back, we'll look back to yesterday, uh, which was the uh, which was uh, Swindon away. Uh, and we'll have a quick uh, we'll have a quick recap over that. That's all right. Sounds good. <laughs> 